Dear ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in the history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Five years ago, a great America in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been served in the flames of wintering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. 100 years later, the life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the menacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. 100 years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of vast ocean of material prosperity. 100 years later, the Negro is still languishing in the corners of American society and finds himself as exiled in his own land. So we have come here today to dramatize an appalling condition. In sense, we have come to our nation's capital to cash a check. When the architects of our public work, the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they were singing a promissory note to which every America was to fall here. This note was a promise that all men, eyes, black men, as well as white men would be guaranteed the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is obvious today that America has defaulted on the promissory note in suffer as her citizen of color and concern. Instead of honoring this sacred obligation, America given the Negro people a bad check, a check which has come back marked in sufficient funds, but we refuse to believe that the bank of injustice in bankrupt we refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great bolts of opportunity of this nation. So we have come to cash this check, a check that will give us upon demand the riches of the freedom and the security of justice. We have also come this hallowed spot to remind America of the first urgency of now. This is no time to engage in the luxury of cooling off to take the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Now, this is the time to make real the promise of democracy. Now is the time of rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlight, path of racial justice. Now is the time to lift our nation from the quick sands of racial injustice to the soil rock of brotherhood. Now it is the time to make justice a reality for all God's children. I would be vital for the nation of overlook the urgency of the moment. The sweltering summer of the Negroes' legitimate discount will not pass until there is an invigorating autumn of freedom and equality. 1963 is not at end but at beginning those who hope that the Negro needed to blow up steam will now be content, will have a road awakening. If the nation returns to business as well, there will be the nicest rest. There will be the neither rest, no tranquility in America until the Negro is guaranteed his citizenship rights. The with the world winds of the revolt will continue to shake the foundation of our nation until the bright day of justice emerge. But there is something that I must say to my people who stand on the world threshold which leads into the place of justice. It is process of gaining our rightful place. We must. We must not be guilty of wrongful deeds. Let us not seek to satisfy our trust for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. We must forever conduct our struggle on the 
high plane of dignity and discipline. We must not allow our creative protest to degenerate or degrade into physical violence. Again and again, we must rise to the majestic heights of meaning physical force with soul force. The marvelous new military which has engulfed the Negro community must not lead us the this trust of all white people for many of our white brothers and evidence by their presence here today have come to realize that their destiny is tied up with our destiny. They have come to realize that their freedom is inextricably bound to our freedom. We cannot walk alone. And as we walk, we must make the place that we shall always march ahead. We cannot turn back. There are those who are asking the devotees of civil rights when we'll be satisfied. We can never be satisfied as long as the Negro is the victim of unspeakable horrors of the police brutality. We can never be satisfied as long as our bodies heavy with the fatigue of Travel cannot gain lodging of motels of highway and the hotel of the cities. We cannot be satisfied as long as the Negro basic mobility is from the smaller ghetto to the large one. We can never be satisfied as long as our children are stripped of the self food and robbed of their dignity by science stating for whites only. We cannot be satisfied as long as the Negro is the Mississippi cannot voted as the Negro of New York. You believe he has nothing for which to vote. No, no, we are not satisfied and we will not be satisfied until the justice rolls down like water and rage and righteousness like a mighty stream. I'm not unmindful that someone of you have come here out of great trial and tribution some of you have come fresh from narrow jail cells some of you have come from areas where your quest of freedom left you back toward by the storms of persecution and strength by the winds of police virginity you have been the patrons of creative sufferings continue to work with weight and unearned sufferings in redemptive go back to the mississippi go back to albana go back to south carolina go back to georgia go back to louisiana go back to slums and ghettos of our north cities knowing that someone this situation can and will be changed let us not wallow in the valley of disappear i say to you today my friends that in spite of the difficulties and frustration of the moment, I still have a dream. It is a dream. Let us not wallow in the valley of disappear. I say to you today, my friends, that is in spite of the difficulties and frustration of this moment, I have a dream. It is dream deeply rotated in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slaves owner will be able to sit down together at a table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day, even the state of Mississippi, a state sheltering with the heat of injustice, sheltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into a oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children one day will live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, by the content of their character. I have a dream. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day down in Alvana, with its vicious races, with its governor having its lip dripping with the words of interposition and nullification, one day right there will be Alvana little back boys and black girls will be able to join hands with 
little white boys and white girls as a sister and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low, the rough places will be made plain, and the cropped places will be made straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. I have a dream today. This is our hope. This is the faith that I go back to the south with. With the faith, we will be able to hew out the mountain of the disappear a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jungling discord of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, and to stand up for the freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. This will be the day when all God's children will be able to surrender with new meaning. My countries of the sweet land of liberty, of the I sing land where my fathers died, lands of the pilgrims pride from every mountain side left freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. So let freedom ring from the hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the hating El Hayes of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow crept crocus of Colorado, let freedom ring from the curvinous slopes of California, but not only that, let freedom ring from the stone mountain of Georgia, let freedom ring from Lacunut mountain of Texas, and let freedom ring from the every hill and molly hill of Mississippi and every mountain side. When we let freedom ring, when we let it ring from every tenement and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up the day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestant and Catholic, will be able to join hands and sign in the words of the old Negro spiritual.